Welcome to the Magic on Main Street podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Tabitha. Over the better part of a decade, our little family has lived the Disneyland lifestyle. As an ex-cast member and now longtime annual pass holders, we've been surrounding our lives with Disney. From Disney bounding to pin trading, exclusive items and all the food, we've fully immersed ourselves in the culture that Walt built. We've done it all and have made some great friends and memories over the years. We'll be sitting down with friends and other Disney junkies to share our stories and advice. We'll be your one-stop shop for Disneyland history and trivia and all the insider information you could ever ask for on merchandise, food, shows, attractions, and everything else you should know about the parks. Our goal is to bring a little magic to your ears each week by sharing our Disneyland journey with you. This This is is Magic Magic on on Main Main Street. Street. And here you may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Woo! Welcome! Welcome, everybody. Welcome to episode 14, or as we're calling it, COVID-14. Mm. Oh, man. I, hate it. Uh, I am Sean. I'm Tabitha. And this is the Magic on Main Street podcast. We're back, everybody. Uh, with us, as always, is the little Kenzie Nader. Uh, she's going to be joining us a little bit later. And our mascot, Scar the Kitten. We got a recording of him um, purring earlier, so we we'll insert that here. here. Okay. All right. <laughs> <That's him. laughs> uh, one thing that I'm really sad about is if you're paying attention, we don't have one of our favorite people in the world here. It's stupid. I know. But we're going to introduce him anyway, because he's listening to us right now as he's editing. It's... Daniel. Daniel Proc. Daniel Proc 95 on Instagram. Mm-hmm. We miss you, Daniel. So much. It's not the same without him falling asleep in the corner. But we are practicing responsible social distancing. I still am losing my voice. Um, it never really fully came back. Had a little bit of a sinus issue going on. Don't worry, I'm safe and not plagued. Not COVID y. Nope. Um, but we've got a fun show. We pulled together a good show this week, um, despite what's been going on in the news. So a little bit of this week in Disneyland history. We're going to talk about the COVID updates, uh, coronavirus, it's plaguing the world. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, bring in some fun with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and some updates on the Avengers Campus. Super excited about that. They've got some app update. <laughs> They've got some app update. <laughs> They've got some... <laughs> I can't say app updates. They've got some app updates uh, in the Disneyland app. Uh, We're still going to talk a little bit about merch, which is interesting. Uh, We've got a special hidden Mickey of the week with the kiddo. And we do have some updates on food. So we're still putting some shows together, folks. Somehow, some way. We've got a... uh, We're going to do events and entertain, but we're going to do a little bit different this week. And... Our main topic this week is going to be myths and legends of Disneyland. Ooh. Make that sound epic, Daniel. Oh. Wow. Still a big show ahead of us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Magic on Main Street podcast. Perfect for Disney fans. Magic on Main Street podcast. Talking about Disneyland. Magic on Main Street Podcast For when you're making your Disney plans Magic on Main Street Podcast Sean and Tabitha will be right back They're back We're back mm-hmm. Alright uh, <laughs> It's an interesting oh. conversation to have in, in a household mm-hmm. But I appreciate her dedication to the show <laughs> Don't want to flush the toilet because you don't want to interrupt the podcast. <laughs> uh, our uh, our studio is uh, our spare bedroom next to Kenzie's room. So good times. Shut it up. Shut it up. Um, Be quiet. So to start the show off, we've got some shout outs that are due. And these are going to be some of our normal culprits. But I just want to say to our friends, Karn and Patrick. They've for been keeping so us sane. helpful, both on the show and in life. So thank you so much. Uh, they've been, they're always feeding us content and making sure we're up to date. And, you know, we do stay as updated, up to date as possible, but you can't get everything. So they've been so helpful. And that's why we're calling them our executive producers. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But I do want to give a really big special shout out to all the cast members of the parks. Mm -hmm. You guys have been handed a a pretty rough deck. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of positivity on, on social media from you guys. And you're staying strong. And, you know, I know you're getting paid for, I'm assuming, a portion of this. I don't I don't know how long it's going to go on. But, uh, you know, you've been troopers. It's It's hard to be displaced and, you know just like everybody in the world right now, we're all displaced and we're all kind of adapting. So thank you so much for who you are and what you do. Agreed. So getting into this week in Disneyland history, there's a lot that happened this week in Disneyland history Mm -hmm. and a lot of attraction openings. Pretty cool. So in 1956 at Disneyland, the Astro Jets opened for business in Tomorrowland. This is actually the original concept i guess of uh the astro orbiter oh okay yeah and uh astro just they closed in 1966 fun story Solid about the astro run yeah so a uh, fun story about the astro orbiters though when i was hired at disneyland i was originally hired on mm-hmm. the astro orbiters attraction and you said no 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 i mean here's the thing it was my it was a second job it wasn't something i needed to do it was something i wanted to do and so i was like yeah that doesn't sound fun i don't really want to push buttons all day um nothing against cast members who want to do that but i wanted something i when i had applied i was trying to get on jungle cruise gotcha which is a very hard attraction to get onto. um and so when the first thing that opened was astro orbiters i was just kind of like meh i'm okay i don't need to do that but luckily they called me back and said hey we've got something on the canoes which is not jungle cruise but it's close you know it's like <laughs> it's, it also has water they legitimately said that and i was like oh okay so i took the job on the canoes anyway uh fast forward to 1967 another really fun attraction that opened was pirates of the caribbean yo ho yo ho pirates life for me and really bad eggs dead man tell no tales <laughs> Did you so, feel like you were there? Yeah, I did. I can smell it. I can smell the musty. Good. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean opened in New Orleans Square, and they kicked it off with all kinds of fun stuff. So they kicked this off with a group of marauding sea dogs, and they were led by this pirate Wally Bogue, and they shanghaied the sailing ship Columbia, and then burst through the new attraction doors with a battering ram. And then when you know when you go into the attraction, there's all these new animatronics. And um, it was actually the largest audio animatronic project up to that point. And it was the last attraction that Walt worked on. Oh, yeah. So that. it's always been a big favorite of mine. I always make it a point to get on that attraction most most trips. So, yeah. So it's my relaxation ride. Yeah, it's, it's where good- I like to when especially when it's hot out. It's where I like to go to escape from it for a while. Yeah, it's a good break. Mm hmm. Also to note, though, uh, when they opened up Pirates of the Caribbean, they also opened up the Blue Bayou. Oh, I didn't know it had been around for that long. Yeah. Hmm. We still haven't eaten there. Well, I still haven't eaten there. You've eaten there, right? I ate there when I was like 13, maybe? 12 or 13? I've never eaten there. Not much older than Kenzie. My cousin Patrick took us there. Oh. Yeah. I think it's because he wanted a prime rib. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah he took my sister and i it was fun i remember that trip very very vividly um in 1969 at disneyland 101 privately owned volkswagen beetles paraded down main street to celebrate herbie day you know herbie the love bug mm-hmm. yeah so i guess they were promoting the love bug film that's cute yeah pretty cool 1972 disneyland's version of the country bear jamboree opened in bear country we talked about that last week hmm in 1975, Disneyland's Mission to Mars opens in Tomorrowland. It was designed in cooperation with NASA, which is pretty cool. And this show replaced Flight to the Moon, and it ran through 1992. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's I actually remember run. this. Yeah, it was, a. I mean, it was fine. It was fun. It was cool. <laughs> uh, in 1989, at Disneyland, 150 visitors got stranded 40 feet in the air in the cable cars, the Skyway cable cars. Uh Oh, yeah, I guess um, someone in one of the gondolas started rocking the car and it it stalled it out and it wouldn't operate. So firefighters from like Anaheim, Orange County, all the way down from Garden Grove, uh, the fire departments had to come out and assist in the rescue. 
don't rock rides. I know. I it, hate when people do it on Soren. On Soren, I can't stand Ugh. that. Cause, and it's it's so annoying because you don't want to be the guy that everybody thinks it is. So like mm-hmm. if somebody starts rocking the chairs, I stick my feet up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I stick them straight out. Not so me. they, they not know me, it's not, not me. 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 <laughs> uh, it's funny. To note, uh, no injuries, no deaths, no nothing. Just just they got stuck. Uh, in 1996, Disneyland unveiled its long-awaited plans to renovate Tomorrowland. Uh, so that was going to be the big project that replaced the People Mover mm. with <laughs> the Rocket Rods. The what? Which exactly? <laughs> we should just do a, a main topic on Rocket Rods. The plight of the Rocket Rods. Oh boy! Yeah, you know, such a weird, such a weird story. Um, but yeah, so. They had big plans to renovate it. It came out great and it still looks that way. You know, they've made some uh, improvements since then, but pretty similar to what you see today with that track running down the middle. Um, And then in 2010, this one was really fun. And this is something you can go and see and experience every time you're in the park now. So the legendary Richard and Robert Sherman, the Sherman brothers, they've written everything. So many things (laughs) for Disney and music wise. They, they are the, the music behind Mary Poppins, you know, Tuppins for birds. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a big one. That was one of Walt Disney's favorite songs that they wrote. Um, That's all because of the Sherman brothers and they're still rocking it out today. Um, But they were, they received one of Disneyland's highest honors, which is a window, a a window on main street. And so uh, in 2010, they got their window and it's uh, if you look out on main street, I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'm going to let you see that where this one is at. It's the two brothers, two makers window on main street. That's cute. So keep an eye out. If you see it, take a picture of it when we get back into the parks, or if you have a picture of it, send it over to us. I have a picture of it on my phone. Yeah. There's a a lot of really fun windows. Uh, We can talk about that in an episode too. Yeah. Windows of main street. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Up next the news this just in breaking news 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 all right it's inevitable let's get the bad stuff out of the way first covid19 mm-hmm. the great pause of 2020 mm-hmm. disneyland all parks closed the uh, disney cruise line closed closed they actually closed disney stores closed yeah uh they put out a an operations update and it just was talking about how all the stores downtown disney disney springs walt disney world the disneyland resort in california hotels all closed down and that they're going to continue to monitor the situation and maintain regular contact so in california i think now that this new order went out on thursday night i think disneyland is no longer exempt i don't think so yeah uh, they were in the first order, and so <laughs> the first order. Uh, but um, yeah, I think this one overrules that now. So it's yeah. going to be really interesting to see. Now that, that just hit me because that just that just happened. Yeah. We were recording this Thursday night, <laughs> much later than we normally do. Yeah, it's, it's been a rough week. It's been a really rough week. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's midnight right now. Mm-hmm. We're tired. We're sick. <laughs> we're uh, you know trying to work as hard as we can and but we love you guys but so. we love everybody and we we want to do this and we want to maintain a beacon in the disney community <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so as of tonight uh the governor of california has issued a an executive order stating that stay the heck home yeah stay home um i don't yeah i, I don't think that they're exempt anymore so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks um but we'll continue to keep you updated um you know, not much to share as of right now. Just everything's closed. They did quietly roll out a um, deal for the hotels on the Disneyland website that goes into effect April 19th. So I'm assuming they're hoping to be back up and running by mid-month. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could don't be. don't know if that's true or not. They've but been sneaking a lot of stuff up. Yeah. 10 yeah. to 20% off premium rooms for all three hotels. Yeah. 19th through like May 21st or something like that. It's a good deal. If you're planning on doing a trip after all this nonsense is over, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, but it's smart that they're pushing it to mid April and not, um, April 1st. Yeah. Cause that's, that was the original date. We'll see. Um, I don't know how this one snuck by me. It was announced a long time ago. When? April of 2019. So a year ago. Mm-hmm. Why, but why did I not know this? I don't know. It's so funny how things can still sneak by us. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a big one, though. Like, how did, how did I miss this? I anyway, uh, it's been announced that um, so just before the park closures began, uh, they brought in cranes to start construction in Toontown for the new attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's the first new attraction since 1994. And over the next three years, um, Toontown in general as a whole will go under a beautification process. As of, for this. as of Friday the 13th, they had um, Mickey's house had scaffolding up. They were doing some um, outer um, updates on the building. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, for those of you wondering, the new attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, uh, it's going to be back where the mountain facade was behind Toontown. Um, that says Toontown. That says Toontown. Um, it's going to be back down in a, in that area. It's so weird that I, I yeah, completely slipped by. Which me. means they'll be they'll either be building a new facade or they'll be taking part of the existing building and renovating it because you enter through El Capitoon. Mm hmm. So they'll need a building entranceway. But I don't really know what's going on yeah, back there. I don't, know. I don't go to Toontown. No, we don't go back there. Sean doesn't like that there's only one way in and one way out. It's, yeah, <laughs> man. You ever watch a cowboy movie? <laughs> you don't want to get caught in the in the canyon that doesn't have an exit. <laughs> they should start firing from above. I, Plus, you saw what kind of things happen back there with those fights. Like, nobody can get back there. Yeah. It's crazy. It creeps me out. You know, I don't talk ill about my my home, my home but <laughs> I don't like it back there. It creeps me out. And it smells weird. Let's be honest. Disneyland is full of smells, and that one is not a good one. <laughs> Stinky kids. Sometimes it just smells like pizza back there, though, because they do have the good pizza back there. On a clear day, way. when it's not a bunch of kids' feet that you're smelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's exciting. Coming in 2022. Secretly, not secretly, but... Very uh, unassumingly, Disneyland posted the Avengers Campus website, which so has crazy. all kinds of cool information on it. Uh, I mean, they're they like they laid it all out. They're still saying July 18th on there for an opening. And then they've got uh, information on the attractions, the encounters, the experiences, and then a map, which we'll talk about more later. A map down there has the Avengers Campus logo right where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So on the attractions area of the site, it has a description of Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure. Um, so it says Wrangle Rogue spider bots run amok during this mayhem filled mission. Um, and so this is going to be a really cool attraction. So it's borrowing technology from like Astro Blasters and Midway Mania. Where it's, you know, it's it's a points-based game, I'm assuming, on mm -hmm. this one. But it's, um, you're shooting at things. So, you know, Buzz Lightyear was the first iteration of a really cool interactive video game type attraction. Midway Mania, you get to, you know, pull the string to shoot things at the screen. This one is going to be very similar, but there's no weapon. There's no, nothing to hold. It's reading your shoulders, your arms, and your hands. The technology in this attraction is so amazing. So where you point your hand and where you're looking, it's going to read your body to, sh to know where to shoot. I'm here for it. I'm so excited about it. So um, you hop aboard a web slinger vehicle and help weave a frenzied web to trap these friendly neighborhood sidekicks in true Spidey style. It's up to you to unleash your inner hero and save the campus from complete chaos. I'm up for the challenge. Best thing about this attraction for families no height restriction. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. So uh, there's some concept art. Uh, we posted some stuff on our Instagram, but we're going to post this one. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, also listed, and this is actually under a section on the site called Heroic Encounters. There's two of them. The first one is the Sanctum. And it says, explore the ruins of a mysterious ancient sanctum and learn the site's secrets from Doctor Strange. Hmm. So this is a Doctor Strange attraction. You're going to see Doctor Strange in the flesh and encounter the master of the mystic arts basically uh it's a meet and greet with dr strange he's going to open your eyes to the mys mysteries of the multiverse um this is you have a theory that it's going to be kind of like the jedi academy yes. where it's like an interactive show yeah that's what i'm hoping me too because it sounds really cool mm -hmm. and i guess at nighttime uh there's this orb called the the orb of cagliostro I hope I'm saying that right. Sure. Uh, they say the orb is known to be especially active at night. Visit after dark and you might see the sanctum flowing with magical energy. Ooh, light show. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And all of these sub pages have the Avengers campus on the map. The second heroic encounter is the Avengers headquarters. 
So they say, encounter some of Earth's mightiest heroes and watch them spring into action to defend the Avengers Command Center. So this, my friends, is the stunt show. I am so excited. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard our episode uh, where we were talking about the stunt show at at, uh, Avengers Campus. I love stunt shows. I'm so jazzed to see this one come to life because we didn't get it for, for Star Wars at Galaxy's Edge. Hopefully we do at some point, but we will get it here. So, it says, there are reports that the villain known as Taskmaster is plotting a break-in, and the Avengers are on high alert. Brave superheroes like Black Widow, Iron Man, Captain America, and Captain Marvel greet new recruits and scan the horizon for potential threats. So, they're saying that if if Taskmaster and his gang start stuff, they're going to be there to answer it. Dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. So, who knows? Maybe someday you will join the Avengers on their next adventure. Oh, we will. Me, me. We me. will. <laughs> uh, they've also got, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but they've got some uh, delights for your tummies at Pim Test Kitchen. Mm-hmm. They're calling it an old lab facility turned quick service restaurant. It's got a seating area and a bar and decor that incorporates remnants of ongoing experiments, gigantic soda cans, humongous condiment bottles, and massive cell phones recycled into menu boards. Yeah, so the story within it is that they're using Hank Pym's particles to innovate food. So some things are going to be really, really, really big. Some things are going to be really, really, really small. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Pretty cool. As it stands right now, the web suppliers site is not active, but I'm assuming it's just going to be what we were talking about where you can get some really cool Avengers gear. So that is... Avengers Campus. I can't wait. They're still saying July 18th, but I've seen rumors both ways that one, construction work is not taking place right now. Two, that it is. Uh, But again, with this new order, it probably won't be. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what they change it to, if if anything. Maybe they're ahead enough to do it. Or maybe they'll open up with with limited... um, features yeah i don't know we'll see we'll keep you posted as we hear things um but i had kind of alluded to they made some app updates did you see those yes um avengers campus is now listed on the map and there's also an entire section for virtual queues plural queues which i have a theory what's your theory well they're gonna have to open back up at some point in time and Mm -hmm. there's still gonna be fears about this whole virus thing because they're i mean it won't be eradicated yeah you know what i mean so um, I have a feeling they're going to move a bunch of the attractions to virtual queues. Anything that has a fast pass can be a virtual queue. That's true. I and mean, just let in only a couple people at a time to keep distance. Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we'll see um, more on that to come. But yeah, they just put that out in the past week and it was like just like randomly in there. Just I was like, wait a minute, virtual queues. And then I saw it like literally within minutes on Twitter, it was blowing up. And I was like, oh, this is a thing. I honestly don't need to go on any rides. Just let me in and let me sit at a table by myself and just listen to the music. I know. I'm missing the music. I I actually, uh, today, yesterday, all the days are running together now. Yesterday, while I was working, I put on the the Main Street music loop in my headphones because I was really missing it. I love that. Yeah. So, um, oh, and then tonight we watched, you know, we're kind of reminiscing now because we're really missing the park. So, tonight we actually watched our own Magic Happens parade video on YouTube. Yeah. Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, but no, but seriously, like we, we did most of the parade. You can see almost all of it. Um, it's a fun show. I love it. I miss it. Me too. Mm. But I wanted to share this one because I thought this was very special. Um, so something that is a pretty big deal. Um, you know, there's a closure. So there's nobody in there in the parks eating the food. So what do they do with it? So really cool story. The Disneyland Resort has a, a like super long ongoing commitment to reducing food waste. And um, they they donate quite a bit already. But during the closure, uh, they're donating all of, the, all of their excess food inventory to Second Harvest Food Bank in Orange County. I like that. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And that it was like truckloads. Really it was a lot of food. They obviously have to abide by certain safety guidelines because, duh, you don't want to give out gross food. Yeah. But any excess inventory they had of dairy, fruit, vegetables, packaged goods, banquet meals, 
they donated all those over to second harvest food bank and their whole mission is to end hunger in orange county so i think that was really cool they're serving their immediate community they're serving the people you know they're not letting a lot of stuff go to waste it was just really neat that's awesome that but, makes me happy yeah and and this is all part of something they already do um last year they donated over twenty thousand meals to second harvest oh wow yeah through their they have a food donation program uh it's through and we should talk about this at some point uh disney volunteers oh yeah ears yeah. ears yeah <laughs> they um they regularly volunteer there it's one of their big projects that's so awesome. pretty cool yeah i was proud of them to see that neat stuff uh merch the mini main attraction for march which is Ma- which is mad tea party will be released um tomorrow saturday the 21st um on shop disney so um you can actually check out the preview if you search um mini main attraction they have their own website on the um, disney parks blog that shows you what each month is going to be um and if they put the preview out they have that up as well um they also have the preview out for april which is it's a small world and And it's it's really 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 cute i don't like it's a small world that ride drives me nuts but I want the ears real, real bad. Yeah. Uh, we'll put up a picture of the whole preview on our Instagram. But the ears are really cute. And they have a fanny pack. And I love it. Yeah, it's really cute. I love it so much. So the April collection is going to include a plush pins, fanny pack, mug, and ears. And yeah. that'll all be available the third weekend of April on Shop Disney. And possibly in stores and in parks if they are open again awesome and shop disney if you are if you need a disney fix um shop disney has got a lot of really good stuff on there they've got kids stuff they've got adult stuff they've got this new flare in the air deal that they're doing where it's like a mini purse they've got a bigger like purse backpack kind of thing where they're kind of encouraging encouraging you to put your disney pin collection on them or uh you know they have the patched series where they have mm-hmm. a bunch of patches so just kind of encouraging you to show off your own flair kind of cool um i'm about then, to redo our whole kitchen i know right just fyi <laughs> i mean i know i haven't told you not yet. much to do besides shop so yeah. uh we'll, <laughs> we'll see how long we can keep that going yeah the one thing that i saw on there that if you haven't seen it already the child animatronic edition by hasbro yeah they've got the pre-order on there it's still available for pre-order it's 59.99 i know it's so cute i don't need it but i do i know but like oh they call it baby yoda on here kind of i didn't even notice that they do no they don't call him that but they say the words baby yoda i've never seen them say that like in an official capacity Hmm. they say he may look like baby yoda but this lovable creature is called the child Mm. that's funny um, but yeah, it's got 25 sounds and motion combinations, happy, excited. He babbles all kinds of fun stuff. He's got a Mandalorian, um, mythosaur necklace that, uh, he got, you know, in the show. Super I cute. Love that. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff on shop Disney. Um, also, um, wonder con was canceled because of this whole <laughs> COVID-19 thing, I hate that. but um they're still releasing the limited pops that funko puts out for WonderCon, and one of those was a really cool like variant on boba fett mm-hmm. which i really like he has a big old myth sore on his helmet um but the one that i you know i love alice in wonderland they had a really cool cheshire cat one yeah he's in a teacup yeah he's super cute so um they do still have those available and i saw those on the funko website yeah um is that the only place you can get them um i'm not sure i saw them on their instagram there's a miguel also with his oh that's guitar. right miguel and it's so that's right cute. very cute so yeah we'll be keeping our eyes out for those when they drop what's next let's do some hidden mickeys with the kid it's time for hidden mickey of the week looking everywhere kenzie's here to share the hidden mickey of the week Okay, welcome to a very special edition of Hidden Mickeys with the Kid. Hidden Mickey with the Kid. Hey, Kenzie. <laughs> Hi. So we decided that since the parks are closed, we're going to do something different with Hidden Mickeys with the Kid. Instead of pointing out Hidden Mickeys within the park, since you can't see them, we're going to give you Hidden Mickeys in Disney movies. Yeah. Yeah. So that being said, what do you have for us this week, kiddo? 
This week, I have one in Cinderella. Cinderella, the yeah. classic animated yeah. Cinderella. Yes. Yes, not the new live action. Yes. Okay. I feel like there's like a million live actions of Cinderella. Yeah. Some yeah, a lot like, of Cinderella stories. Yeah. yeah. Not always Cinderella, but right. Yeah. So what do you so in Walt Disney's 1950 animated classic Cinderella? Where are we going to find a hidden Mickey? You'll find it when you see Cinderella in like the big, huge, kind of like open room mm -hmm. cleaning the floor when she's scrubbing the floor yeah when with she's a like, bucket of water and, yeah yeah and there will be like kind of like a series of bubbles on the screen okay and it'll come be colorful okay like um what's that word iridescent yeah a there bubble. We go. Yeah. yeah yeah like a bubble yeah yeah okay but a little bit more colorful okay like a, like a party's happening in them <laughs> okay disco <laughs> bubbles yeah the second okay. shot of the bubbles okay you will see for a split second, three bubbles in the shape of a hidden Mickey. Oh. And the ears will be pointing to the left. Okay, so ears pointing to the left body, or head on the right. Uh -huh. Okay. yes. So, Cinderella's <laughs> on the floor, scrubbing away. Yeah. Shoots to a shot of bubbles. Not the first one. The second the one. The second shot of bubbles. You're going to see a hidden Mickey facing to the left. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. Actually, it's not Cinderella. It's Ella. <laughs> Ella? Yeah. They gave her that name because she was slept by the cinders. Oh. Did they say that in the animated? I don't think so. No? Where'd that come from? That came from the live action. No, it didn't. Wait. It came from something. I just know that one. <laughs> it came from something? Yeah. Okay. I just don't know which one. Because they're like, oh, they it's not Pitus. The stepsisters. Drizella and, and keep wanting to say Ozella. No. What the heck is Anastasia. Anastasia. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a fun one. Mm -hmm. We'll just keep this up until all this nonsense is over with. Yeah. All righty. Well, thanks for your hidden Mickey this week, kiddo. You're welcome. All right. Go to bed. Food. Nom, 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 nom. So, you know, if you've listened to any of our shows, you know we really love the food, so we're missing Disney food right now. Life is really hard. Yeah. Not I've much eaten almost all of my quarantine snacks. No, you haven't. We have tons of food. That's what he thinks. All the boxes are empty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since we can't enjoy any food right now, we do have something to share about some new food that's coming to the parks. Yes, Avengers Campus food. Yeah, you want to talk about that? Yes. So, Pim Test Kitchen um, and the Pim Tasting Lab. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, they're using the whole um, history behind Hank Pim's particles. Um, so, some things will be really, really big. Some things will be really, really small. And one of the things that they have as their appetizers is the quantum pretzel with beer cheese and um, I was reading some of the blogs. There's a couple different blogs that got to go do the preview. And they're all saying that these pretzels are massive. Yeah. Like huge. Yeah. And they look really, really good. They look really good. I love pretzels. What's I love a good them? soft pretzel. Salt. It's just salt? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then that comes with beer cheese. And then another appetizer that they have listed is the snack molecules, which has mini pretzels, honey roasted peanuts, and popped sorghum. What the which heck is, is that? It's like a healthier healthier alternative to like popped corn. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's in, I think they have it in the uh, the snack mix at Oga's Cantina. Yeah, I think so. It's just like a poofy. Yeah, it's a fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> It's a poofy. Um, so those are like... That's those are like the two opposites, the really, really big pretzel and then the tiny little snacky. Yeah, I've been dying to talk about this chicken sandwich. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so funny. So, again, they're, you know, they're playing off of the whole, you know, your large, larger than life or smaller than believable size thing. Uh, this one is called the not so little chicken sandwich. And it's Korean inspired fried chicken with teriyaki citrus sauce and red chili sauce on a slider bun. But when you look at this. 
<laughs> we'll put up a picture. When you when you look at this sandwich, the chicken is so massive compared to the bun. It's a regular sized chicken sandwich on yeah, a slider bun. Exactly. It's, it looks so the ratio ridiculous. is off. Yeah, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> we'll have to put up a picture of that. It's it's just it's more entertaining than anything. It also comes with pickled cabbage yeah. slaw. That's going to be a good one for the gram. Everybody's mm-hmm. going to want to take a picture of that one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's well, funny. another one of their main dishes is going to be also, it's the impossible spoonful, yeah. which is a pasta dish with impossible meat um, meatballs. They're going to have large ones and micro mini, and micro the, meatballs as well. And the big one is big. Yeah, it's enormous. It's massive. Um, and it's served in a supersized spoon with a tiny fork. That's too funny. I like it. It's cute. The pimini. Yeah. Pimini is obviously a panini uh, on toasted focaccia with salami, ham, provolone, sun-dried tomato, mayo, and arugula. And it's got a marinara dipping sauce. And this thing is massive. It's like family size. Yeah, it's really, really big. It's huge. Um, The thing that I'm looking forward to the most is the PB. I don't know if it's PB3 or PB cubed. cubed. Let's go with three. PB3 superb sandwich. Yeah. Um, it's a grilled sandwich with peanut butter, banana, smoked bacon, and strawberry jam. And it's served with a banana smoothie shot and crispy potato tots. This is like a kid's lunch. And I'm so excited about it. It looks really yummy. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on here. I have talked about it. I love peanut butter. Mm-hmm. So I'm dying to try this one. Yeah. But I'm wondering if it's real peanut butter. I think it will be. Because they have quite a few things that have peanut butter in them. Okay. They have a couple, um, I think, or I may, there might just be one. There's a drink that has peanut butter in it Okay. Because we talked about those uh, PB&J mochi. That, that's definitely not peanut butter. No. Right? That's like that PB2 stuff. That's the powdered peanut butter. Yeah. I don't like it at all. Mm-mm. Anyway. Um, and then the dessert that they have there is the candy bar which is layers of dark chocolate with nougat and marshmallow on a brownie base. And it's 12 inches long. That's like a whole ruler. It is a whole ruler. (laughs) It's insane. That's awesome. And then over at the, uh, oh, you'd said uh, the peanut butter and jelly uh, drink. That's at Pim Tasting Lab. Yeah, the PB&J Punch. Yeah. It's lemonade with peanut butter and strawberry flavors with whipped cream and peanut butter malt balls. That one is not alcoholic. Okay. I, I mean, I don't like lemonade. And I don't know how this is going to taste. I am, I imagine it's going to taste like when you take a bite of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then take a swig of your drink. Have you ever had the PB&J soda? Yeah. It's, it's gross. terrible. It's awful. So I'm nervous. Yeah. This could be really bad. But it could be really good. So we'll see. Yeah. This next one, I don't know how to say. Um, it's called the Pingo Doce. Pingo Doce. How do you say that? I don't know. P-I-N-G-O, like bingo, but with a P, in D-O-C-E. Pingo doce? Pingo doce? I don't know. Whatever it is, it looks like Mountain Dew. It's very incredible hulkish. And the only info they have on it, they weren't able to taste these ones at the preview. Um, oh, they told them it's I know vanilla what it flavored. Is. I know what it's from. What? It's from the Hulk. It is? Yeah, so um, it's a Portuguese drink. Uh, Bruce Banner worked in a Pingo Doce bottling plant in the movie. Uh, That's what it is. I have seen the Hulk one time. Oh. Well, there's multiple Hulk movies. I don't even know which one I've seen, but I've seen one. But yeah, so that one, all they said was it has a very pungent vanilla flavor it's a guarana drink Mm. Mm -hmm. a guarana soda okay crazy that's fun yeah um on to the alcoholic beverages i spelled that wrong experiment it's experiment yeah so the experiment is a tequila drink with habanero and mango syrup with lemon popping pearls Mm -hmm. we'll try that See what happens. The molecular meltdown is a beer float. I want to try this. It's a vanilla ice cream and a marshmallow stout. I'm excited to see what this tastes like. Yeah, because you don't really like marshmallow. I like marshmallow stouts, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's the honey buzz, which is a gin drink with honey, lemon juice, and an edible honey straw. Mm. I don't like gin. 
uh, yeah. It's dry. It's a weird flavor. <laughs> Not a huge fan. But maybe the honey and lemon will even it out a little bit. Yeah. Because it tastes like Christmas trees. Yeah. Um, the particle fizz. Yeah. That one is a hard seltzer, popping pearls that are cherry flavored. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then their signature drink for the land is going to be called the Regulator. The Regulator. It's um, a tequila drink with lime, habanero, mango, and golden road mango cart wheat ale. Oh, it's yeah. A, it's a beer cocktail. Yeah. Golden road mango cart. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say golden rod. No. So I had to stop myself because I knew that's what it, I knew that it wasn't Golden Rod. I knew it was Golden Road, but it yeah. was very hard to say. There will also be eight beers on draft. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if they'll do a flight. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, this one is my favorite idea. Obviously, I can't say it's my favorite food because I haven't had it yet, but um, the, in the end of, at the, at the end of Avengers, after the credits roll, we talked about this last week. Um, it shows the heroes in a shawarma joint earlier in the movie. Tony says, after this, you want to go get some shawarma. So they cut to the, this at the end of the movie after the credits roll. And they're all just sitting there enjoying their victory with falafel. They all look very tired, very tired, just eating and not really saying much. <laughs> um, but they're bringing this to life with the shawarma plot. <laughs> the shawarma palace. Um, it's the, uh, it's going to be a replica, I guess, of that uh, little restaurant in the movie. Really excited. Uh, they're going to have New York's tastiest chicken wrap with lemon and tahini sauce. And then they're also going to have an impossible victory falafel, which is impossible meat and crusted cauliflower. So pretty cool. Uh, they're, they're going to be replicating that restaurant, bring some good shawarma to the place. And then, um, you know, they're doing some really cool items with impossible meat. So that's going to keep the... Uh, the specific heads. diet friendly people really happy. Mm -hmm. I'll let you talk about the sweet stuff. Um, Terran treats, which I'm assuming is going to be over by the exit of um, guardians. Cause that's where they had put up some walls to put some stuff in um, recently. They will have um, the cosmic cream orb, which is a crispy cream puff with whipped raspberry cheesecake mousse. Mm. It looks kind of like a, a cream filled pan dulce. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds delicious. Yeah. And then they'll also have the sweet spiral ration, which are um, twisted churros with colorful ooh, twisted churros with colorful sugar in different flavors. And the colors are not going to correspond with the flavor. So you know how like that's interesting. Red ones will have like a red flavor, like it'll be like cherry yeah. or like something like that. Like no, it won't have anything to do with that's the color. interesting. So this kind of, I don't know. This is is coming out of nowhere now. Um, when I go on um, Mission Breakout, get mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, I always notice this is something that always stands out when it's reading your hands. What color means go? Blue. Right. Not green. Yeah. So normally in anything in our world, you know, green means go, red means stop. They use those colors to coordinate. Uh, blue means go. Yeah. In uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And I always think that. I'm like, yeah, if this is another planet, why would it be green? That's our thing, not there. So I always thought that was very interesting. So it's neat to see that they're doing colors that don't correspond to a flavor. Yeah. Because, you know, like... Kids that grew up in a less than wealthy household, we called like Kool-Aid by colors, mm -hmm. not flavors. So if you were to get the, the red drink, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a cherry or strawberry drink. It's just the red drink. Mm -hmm. Grape is not grape. It's purple. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to go against that. So don't go with your eyes on this one. Go with go with the description. Mm hmm. So that wraps up food for this week. Exciting stuff. I'm stoked. Can't yeah. wait for this thing to open. Mm hmm. Yeah. Up next, let's do events and entertainment or during COVID-19, what to do during COVID-19. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of really fun stuff that you can do still while you're quarantined in your home, I practicing know. social distancing. Uh, you know, a lot of places are ordering that we stay in our homes and don't go outside unless it's absolutely necessary, uh, even for work in a lot of places. Um, so here are some things that you can do while spending time with your loved ones or by yourself during the isolation times. One, if you don't have a subscription to Disney plus, what are you doing? You should. 
So <laughs> this week, we're going to start what to watch on Disney Plus. So, Tabitha, this week, you have one movie to watch this week on Disney Plus. What's it going to be? Moana. Moana. That's a good one. You watched that today. I did watch that today. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Like I, it's I, it's it's something I enjoyed from the beginning. Um, but it, it grows on me more and more every time I see it. It's, it's a charming such a story. Good movie. Yeah, I love it. It's it's a it's a really good fun story. Uh, mine is going to be a throwback. Sword in the Stone. We watched that last night. Yeah, it's something mm-hmm. that wasn't always available on the streaming services. So it's it's so fun to see it on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to give you a bonus one. This is going to be a TV series too. If you haven't watched The Clone Wars yet, they're in the last season. They did the final season on Disney+. Plus. It's active right now, so you're watching them as they come out week by week. It's such a good story. It tells so much of the story in between episodes two and three of what happened during this war. You know, they have this movie that's The Clone Wars. Well, what happened in the wars? They have like the clone battle. So Mm -hmm. it's nice to see like what happened with Anakin and and Obi-Wan. They have some really cool characters like Captain Rex and Commander Cody. Um, In this new season, they've introduced this company called uh, the Bad Batch, which is um, a group of clones that have desirable mutations so really cool storyline if you haven't watched the new season definitely check it out if you haven't watched the clone wars at all go catch up they're all on there so stream it or throwback yeah boy meets world is on there (laughs) i'm gonna start that tomorrow all right that sounds good um something that we found recently um our friends over at foolish mortal supply they're doing free coloring pages on their website. So Kenzie printed a bunch. Yeah. So Kenzie was doing a bunch of those uh, this evening. And uh, if you go over to foolishmortalsupply.com, you can see those on there. And if you happen to find anything that you want to purchase, use the code magic on main for 15% off. Mm-hmm. Cool. Bonus. Bonus. And I thought this was really fun. I think this was yesterday. Again, the days are all blurring together, but uh, they announced the <laughs> Imagineer in a box. Um, Mm -hmm. And this is actually hosted through Khan Academy. Um, If you're not familiar, it's, it's a very popular uh, education site for kids. So they focus on learning. And um, so Walt Disney Imagineers um, inspiring creativity, curiosity, and innovation have created Imagineering in a box. This is a one of a kind learning experience that gives families a chance to dream, create and build right from home. So you don't have to go anywhere. You can do it right from your computer. Um, so go over to the Disney Parks blog or check out our link tree on Instagram. Uh, we'll put a link in there for that. So, yeah, so that's uh, those are some fun things you can do while you're isolated. You know, we do have this self-quarantine thing going on. It's more of a mandatory thing than a, uh, a voluntary thing these days. So find something to do. Plenty to watch on streaming services, coloring sheets on Foolish Mortal Supply. And check out that Imagineering in a box thing. Um, We got it for Kenzie and she thought it was really cool. So check it out. We're going to take a little bit of a break so I can drink some water so that I have a little bit of a voice for our main topic coming next. All right, we're back and we've got a fun main topic for this evening. Uh, This has been brought up a few times, actually. I've had a bunch of people asking me to do this. Um, So... Without further ado, it is Myths and Legends of Disneyland. Land, land, land. <laughs> Let's get to the, the, the first one is going to be a pretty common one. And this is a question that still comes up to this day. But we actually got a, you know, I, I knew that this was a thing from working there because some, somebody told me. But you never know. That could be a lie. You know, some mm-hmm. people spread rumors. But this was actually confirmed recently in the Imagineering story on mm-hmm. Disney+. Plus. Um the Matterhorn has a hidden basketball court, which technically it's actually false, false. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, there is a lot of truth to it. So you can you, when you say basketball court, that can mean a lot of things. It's not a full size court. Um, uh, people have been fascinated about by this for years. Mm-hmm. I mean, this has been a rumor for ages. Yeah. Um, you know, cause I worked at Disneyland in 2000, 2001, mm-hmm. 2000, 2001. And it was a rumor back then. I, you know, somebody had told me that it was true and I was like, okay, well, so I believed it. And so I've told people since then, yes, it is true. Um, but we did find out that there is a basketball hoop with about a, so less than a half size court. It's actually enough to do free throws on. 
Um, but yeah, hidden behind the facade of the Matterhorn Mountain is a fun little basketball hoop where you can shoot hoops. Um, it's in their break room. Yeah. So the, uh, you know, people that work on the Matterhorn, um, the, you know, mountain climbers, they can all go in there and shoot hoops. Super cool. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Um, but myth, there's a basketball court inside the Matterhorn. False. False. But you can play basketball inside the Matterhorn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This one, I never got confirmation on this one, so I'm glad that we were talking about it today. So, if you go through the drawbridge on um, in Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty's Castle, Castle the, you know, the centerpiece of Disneyland, if you look down while you're walking through, just as you pass the gate from, you know, from the hub, as you're passing through the gate over the drawbridge, if you look down, there's going to be a golden disc, is what it looks like. And so the myth is that there is a gold spike outside Sleeping Beauty's castle that is the geographical center of the park. False. <laughs> um, so this is actually what the Disneyland surveying team uses to maintain a sight line from Main Street USA to Sleeping Beauty's castle uh, when they make measure- measurements. So this is per the Walt Disney archives. The marker in question is one used to help maintain central surveying sight lines from Main Street USA to the castle and helps to ensure consistent and accurate surveying measurements for this location when they are taken. Thus, that is not the geographical center of the park. False. Yeah. Boo. (laughs) But if you think about it, though, it wouldn't have been anyway, because when that was placed, Toontown didn't exist. Mm Mm-hmm. So it would have never been the center of the park because that means they would have moved it after Toontown was put in. Yeah. So, you know. The more you know. I was going to say that. <laughs> I know, but you yawned. I didn't mean to. Um, what's next? Um, next, Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. That's a big fat false Walt Disney did not say that. No. Imagineer Tom Fitzgerald wrote that line for the Epcot attraction Horizons. All right. And it's been used in many things since and misconstrued to be a Walt Disney quote. Yeah. But it is not. No. Um, Another one around Walt himself. Um, Walt Disney's bust is featured in the Haunted Mansion in the graveyard scene. The Mellow Men singing group? Yes. Nope. False. Mm-mm, that didn't happen. Uh, this is actually a bus that bears a resemblance to Walt, but it's actually Thurl Ravenscroft. He's, He's the guy with the real deep yeah. voice. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. And he does the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he actually was the originating voice of Tony the Tiger. They're great. If we want to talk about fun <laughs> facts. Um, so false. Yeah, that's not. a falsy. Uh, a lot of false. They had the same. We're, we're busting myths over I here. I know. They had the same sort of mustache. Yeah, he, he looks similar to him. Mm-hmm. I can see why people would think that. But it ain't. Nope. This one is really fun for me because people have been saying this one forever. And I like to comment on it when they do. So the myth is that they control your mind through sense. This is true. Well, they're not controlling your mind, but uh, so, you know, there's all these conspiracy theories that Disneyland is controlling you through your nose and it's kind of accurate. Um, So Disneyland smells delicious in most areas. Sometimes it doesn't smell so great. We call that Disneyland magic just so it doesn't have a bad connotation to it. Um, Other people call it sewage. We call it magic. Um, But, um, Disneyland smells amazing, and that's by design. They actually created, the Imagineers created what is called the Smellitizer. Um, it was created by uh, an Imagineer named Bob McCarthy, and it was to manifest smells through the park. So I can see why people would say, oh, it's you know controlling your mind or whatever. It's not like they're putting the smell of popcorn near you know, a bathroom. It's not just to give you a scent. It's to enhance what you're already 
like experiencing. Yeah. So you're going to get smells of like candy near the candy palace. And if you come during different seasons, you're going to smell like peppermint or pumpkin spice during autumn. Um, the haunted mansion smells musty. You know, they put these smells out to enhance your experience, not to like give you any kind of like subliminal, subliminal content connotations about anything. Subliminal. Subliminal connotations mm -hmm. yeah no subliminal m m messaging um disneyland during christmas time is one of my favorite smells yeah absolutely the smell of cinnamon and nutmeg and if you ever want to experience that smell yes. year round year round there is the little store that used to be where you could get the coat of arms yeah um things just inside the castle um it now sells um christmas decorations ornaments year round and it smells like christmas in there smells like christmas year Always. round it's their own special blend yeah so that is a, a really good example of their smellitizer so it's making you smell like it's making the the room smell like christmas so mm -hmm. it's really it's controlling the environment uh to give you an experience not really used to like make you think popcorn when you're near something else yeah so they're not trying to steer you in any way Disneyland uses smells. True. Here's one that I've actually heard. I actually heard this maybe a year ago, and I'd never heard this myth before, but I never really thought about it either. Uh, but there's a myth that Sleeping Beauty's castle has a working drawbridge. And that is true. True. But ding, 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 ding. they've only lowered it twice in Disney history. Once on opening day in 1955, and then again when the new Fantasyland opened in 1983. They so, should do it again. Yeah. It looks pretty permanent though if you ever you look down and try to see it like it's it's very permanent fixture yeah um so yeah it hasn't been it hasn't been raised or lowered is it, since 1983 this is a fun one and i can confirm this one because i was a cast member so this one is saying that disneyland cast members are not allowed to point with one finger or to tell a guest i don't know this is true while I've seen and heard some cast members that aren't really following this guideline so much anymore, it is true. So in some cultures, pointing with one finger is considered rude. And so Disneyland cast members are always instructed to use either two fingers or an entire hand to point at things. Um, so you'll see, you can always pick out a cast member or wannabe cast members mm -hmm. uh, that point with two fingers. Um, and so you won't see that you won't see somebody pointing with one finger i've seen it a couple times recently and i'm like hey you can't do whoa, that whoa, 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 uh, but whoa. they do teach you this in training at disneyland that you should not point with one finger um some form and this one i won't confirm because i don't know um some former employees insist that this could also be a nod to walt disney's smoking habit because mm. when he would point things he'd point with a cigarette in his hand so, but it's more because of the culture thing, I believe. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Um, but cast members, if you're listening, remember, you can't say, I don't know. So don't do it. I heard it recently and I was like, uh, I hear cast members say, I don't know all the time. And I'm like, yeah, then find out. Yeah. You know, what's <laughs> killing me. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm typically very patient with cast members. Uh, but we had a run in <laughs> one day uh, on Batu because I was trying to figure something out. It was when it was first opening. We didn't know all the answers. You know, we were still trying to navigate in our own way. And I'm like, what do I do with this? I can't even remember the exact situation, but I went over to Smuggler's Run and I asked the cast member, you know, this is my question. And they said, I don't know. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> It took a couple times before they let the act die down and just answer my question. But I was like, guys, come on. Like, just answer the question. I don't want to play this game right now. I'm done now. Yeah. It was the, the, the fun wore off really quickly in that situation. But anyway, I digress. Um, Disney bought and released cats on the property to control the rodent population. Negative. Nope. No. That's false. They were there. Yeah, the cats were already there when the crews entered the building that was going to become um, Sleeping Beauty's castle. And since they weren't hurting anyone and are natural hunters, they allowed them to stay. So they're regularly cared for by Disney staff, and they even get spayed and neutered when it's possible. Yeah, and they don't talk about this very much. Um, so it's not normally formally commented on, uh, this whole colony of cats. Um, but it's, it is believed that they've been around since 19, you know, 1955. They were there when Walt was there. Um, 
And who said it? The Los Angeles Times said that it's a partnership that may go back to the days of Walt Disney, who some say first discovered the scores of cats in Sleeping Beauty Castle and refused to let them be killed. Good. It's a very Walt thing. Good. Um, so there, this is funny because this is kind of a phenomenon in the park. There are websites, there are blogs, there's an Instagram account, a Twitter, a Facebook um and you know disneylandcats.com is a thing and they've addressed this issue a few times and they they said on their site that disney adopted out the cats to cast members but that that disney realized that the cats were actually really effective at combating the mice problem um so they they let them stick around um and you know it seems like they see them as a useful thing because they're there to this day um and there's an estimate that there's around 200 cats on property that's so many cats i know and you'll see them in a lot of different places um one of the strangest places you'll see them is on tom sawyer's island there's a black cat that lives on tom sawyer's island i remember i saw it one day when we were on the on mark the twain, twain and yeah. i wanted to get it so bad yeah you'll see them normally not in the inhabited portions of the island you'll usually see them on the back end where back where mike fink's house is on the back end of the river Okay. Yeah. Um, you usually see them back there because that's where nobody goes. There's no, like, there's the, the attraction doesn't go that, back that far. So you'll see them back in that area. <clears throat> Excuse I me. I just realized I never followed Disneyland Cats. Really? What's yeah. wrong with you? Follow them. Disneyland Cats on Instagram. I follow them. There's a very handsome cat. There's a lot of really handsome cats there. There's one that hangs out over by Grizzly River Run. I call them Snickers. I don't know if anybody else does. I don't know if I made that up or if somebody told me that, but we call him Snickers, and I think it's a he, the handsome little guy. They call him Francisco. Who does? Disneyland cat. Do they? Yeah. So Francisco is a long-haired tortoise shell cat. Mm -hmm. That's one that people have named. Yeah. But I call him Snickers. Yeah. And then there's the one that looks just like him, but... Because he has the the ear that's kind of like Jack. Yeah. He and looks like he's been the in a other fight. one is a girl, and they call her Angelina. Angelina. And then there's some that, one named Horace, and then another that's Giovanni. That's a long-haired orange kitty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's pretty cool. Um, but here's some advice, though. Let's be kind. Be kind to the ducks. Be kind to the cats. Leave them alone. They're there doing their own thing you do your own thing you have cats in your real world you don't need to worry about the cats at disneyland leave them alone they don't you know they're they're wild even though they're in a park they're a wild cat they're feral animals so leave them alone you never know what, the, what could happen they could bite you or scratch you or whatever you don't want cat scratch fever yeah, it's not, real they're not socialized um but you can take all the pictures you want just leave them alone don't touch them um here's one there are real skulls in pirates of the caribbean true true now, we're basing this on real testimonies from cast members. So, if you know something different, please tell us. But, it is said that Imagineers used real human bones when they were making the attraction because the, the fake ones didn't look real enough. Or dead enough, I guess. Gross. Um, so, supposedly, they got the bones from UCLA Medical School. And this is the story I've heard, too. And this is for years. I've heard this story for years. So, when they brought in these skulls, they say that one reigned over his treasure... Two played a game of chess, and another met his end when he was stuck with a sword. And they and there was, and the last one would be um, a skull and crossbones hanging behind a, a pirate in bed, which we'll talk about that. Uh, but they say that the skeletons remained for many, many years until they were eventually swapped out for fake ones. But it is still believed, and this has been confirmed by several cast members. So we'll, I don't, you know, if you know something different, please tell us. Uh, it is believed that the skull and crossbones behind a skeleton in bed are real. There's videos out there of cast members saying it, saying this one's real, the other ones are not, this one is was, this was wasn't, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it is, it's, it's confirmed. I don't know if it's confirmed by the right sources, but it's confirmed. You can steer the Mark Twain riverboat. That can't be true, right? It's true. Oh, it is. We've done it. We've done it a few times. Yeah. Um... Disney fans of all ages can earn their captain's license by asking to steer the riverboat. You go up to the top, steer it around the river, and you can sign the guest book. Yeah, so this is a really fun experience. And here's how you do it. Uh, get to the attraction early. And I'm not saying like early in the morning, just before the next boat crew starts lining up. So just be the first one there. 
find somebody in costume that's out on the dock and just ask them if somebody's already signed up to go up to the captain's uh, to the uh, to the wheelhouse. And hopefully they say no. If no, they'll take you up there and you do get a license. It's signed and you get to take it home with you and everything. And there's a guest book up there that you can sign. We've done it a few times mm-hmm. and it's so much fun. It's the best view in the park, I think. I like it up there. Yeah. Okay, here's the last one. Okay, this one was requested by <laughs> five people asked for this one. Five. Yeah. This is the big one. This is the one that people are always saying. And this one I've heard from many, many people. Walt Disney is cryogenically frozen or Walt's head is cryogenically frozen. Ew. False. Gross. Yeah. Um, Also, he's not underneath Pirates of the Caribbean. Walt died in 1966 and he was cremated and he's located at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale. Um, His ashes were not scattered around Disneyland. But the reason people have this myth floating around is because back in 1972, there was a guy who did an interview. His name is Bob Nelson, and he was the president of the Cryonics Society of California. He had said that Disney wanted to be frozen But he also, in that interview, stressed that he wasn't. But based on that interview and based on just urban myths, this myth has been going around for decades. Because, I mean, there are episodes of TV shows that reference this. There are, uh, I know in, I believe it was Futurama, there was a Walt Disney head. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there was one in um, The Simpsons, too. Yeah, The Simpsons. It's It's been in a lot of stuff. So this has been a myth that's been floating around for eons. Walt Disney was not cryogenically frozen. Sorry, everyone. Sorry to disappoint. But, you know, for the sake of time, I think we're going to leave it at that. But there are lots and lots of myths floating around about Disney... Disneyland, Walt Disney. Uh, So if there's something that you want us to uncover or something you think is worth bringing up, hit us up. You can email us at friends at magiconmainstreetpodcast.com or go to our Instagram at magiconmainpod. This is fun. I like talking about this stuff. We're going to get into a lot of the historical stuff about Disneyland and just kind of the the more off the beaten path topics because you know we can't go to the parks and enjoy it right now so we're going to keep talking about this stuff so we hope you enjoyed our myths and legends of disneyland we'll be back with quote of the week quick update this is recorded uh after the fact um (laughs) we recorded the episode last night but we found out some really cool news today fun stuff coming to disney plus onward onward's coming oh my gosh oh my gosh my gosh onward is going to be released on april third on disney on plus. disney plus but it's going to be streaming on itunes and digital platforms tonight for purchase right now right go. now so go now watch onward we're going on a quest Woo-hoo! can't wait <laughs> it's time for a quote of the week putting words together that last forever it's quote of the week this week This was a pretty obvious one for me because the topic of leadership has been coming up a lot lately. Um, In these trying times, you want to look to your leaders for answers and support and, you know, to make sure that you feel safe and and taken care of. And, you know, it's just been coming up a lot lately. So I thought this was pretty fitting. Walt said, leadership means that a group, large or small, is willing to entrust authority to a person who has shown judgment, wisdom, personal appeal, and proven competence. And I couldn't agree with that anymore. Um, I'm a leader in my day-to-day. You know, I I have a a team uh, in a creative realm. Um, I do marketing for a living, and I'm a creative director. And, you know, I lead a team, and I try to lead that way every single day because... You know, when you have a team that works with you, for you, under you, however you want to say it, they're looking to you for support. They're looking to you for answers. There should be no question in their minds about anything. Uh, You should be providing those answers. And, um, you know, you should be the wise owl in the situation. And I think that that's something that I've always taken very seriously. I think it's a very, um, when you take on a leadership role, you are 
taking on that responsibility to be the guiding light, the the lighthouse in a storm. You know, you're you're the guy. So this one really stuck out for me this week. So if you're a leader, follow those four things. Judgment, wisdom, personal appeal, and proven competence. Leadership isn't given, it's earned. That's our quote of the week. And that brings us to the sad part of the show. It's the outro. Mm -hmm. Why did I start titling that? That's so weird. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The outro. Um, But from the bottom of our hearts, uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us, especially in this time of turmoil and weirdness. Um, It's a very strange time in our history of the world. And, you know, we're all going to get through this together. And I hope that this has been a an escape from the reality of what's going on outside those doors. Um, We're all going to be trapped in our homes for a little while. So I hope that you're enjoying this as much as we are. (laughs) Don't, don't get cabin fever. Um, Go for a walk. Listen to Disney songs and go for a walk. And that's been the kind of the bummer. It's been raining. So as soon as the sun comes out, we're going to be out of this house walking, you know, social distancing doesn't mean you can't go outside. Mm -hmm. It just means stay away from people. Um, So, you know, be safe, you know, take care of each other. We're all, we, we're all we have in this world. So, um, but again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And if you know of somebody who's looking for something to do, share this podcast with them. You know, if they're missing Disneyland as much as you and I, then, you know, maybe they can get something out of this and, you know, maybe you can find some solace in our words or even the video of, you know, magic happens, the the parade video we put up, you know, there's all these things that we're trying to do to just keep people's minds at ease. So help us out in sharing this out. If you have any stories, if you have any myths you want busted, or if you have anything you want to share with our audience, anything like that, make sure you email us at friends at magic on main street podcast.com. Also follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Magic on Main Pod. And I know that these are times of trouble, um, and they are for us too. But uh, if you have anything that you would like to add to the show from a monetary standpoint, uh, you can become a Patreon subscriber for as little as $2 a month. You're going to get early access most of the time. You know, Sorry for those fans this week. It's been a very trying week. Um, but you're going to get early access, and you'll never have to listen to an ad. Uh, you can find out more at patreon.com slash magic on main street. Also make sure it only takes 30 seconds to subscribe and leave us a review on, uh, on the old Apple podcasts. Uh, also share out our, our podcast with your friends. Like I said, all those Disney lovers in your lives. But with that being said, that's it on behalf of Tabitha, Kenzie, Daniel, Scar, and myself. Thank you so much for listening to the Magic on Main Street podcast. We'll see you real soon. Hi. Magic on Main Street, just like a churro, you're so sweet. Our time with you is such a treat. Spread the Disney love. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs>